A space shuttle is made up of three sections, an external tank, an orbiter vehicle, and a solid rocket booster. Let's have a look at solid rocket boosters. A solid rocket booster is manufactured in eight segments. The nose cap is the uppermost part, followed by the frustum. The next three segments make up the forward section. The last three segments with a nozzle make up the aft section. Each segment is made up of strong miraging steel. The insulation layer is made up of asbestos. The propellant is of only one meter thick, most of the segment is hollow. And there is an inhibitor layer at end of each segment to prevent any leak. The rocket propellant mixture consists of ammonium perchlorate, atomized aluminum powder, and iron oxide. The mixture is combined by P-band binder. The forward skirt holds the avionics, which control the ignition, thrust vector, separation, and recovery process. Let's learn about the ignition process. The first step of ignition is safe and arming device. There is a safing pin to prevent unwanted ignition. The safing pin is removed manually a few days before the launch. There is a DC motor. When safe signal is given to the motor, the shaft rotates to arm position. There is an indicator at the top which shows safe and armed modes. There are two holes in the shaft and two flame tunnel inlets. As the shaft rotates, the holes align with the inlets. When two signals fire 1 and fire 2 is given, the NSI or NASA standard initiator fire through the flame tunnel. This ignites the pyro booster charge. The booster charge then ignites the propellant in the igniter initiator, which then ignites the igniter propellant. There is an 11 star fin, which burns rapidly and provides enough thrust at starting point. The igniter ignites the fin and the propellant all the way down to the nozzle. Two solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, provide an initial thrust of 23.6 million newtons, which is nearly 73% of the whole thrust. Once a SRB is ignited, it cannot be stopped until the propellant is completely burnt. Let's examine hold down posts. Before ignition, the SRB is attached to the launch platform with hold down posts. Each SRB has four hold down posts. Before ignition, the hold down posts held the space shuttle straight against strong winds. Otherwise, there is a chance that the space shuttle can tilt and fall on its back. During ignition, the orbiter vehicle engines are ignited a few seconds before SRB engines. Without these posts, the space shuttle sways a few degrees forward and will lose its balance. The bolt in each post secures the SRB and launch platform together. A frangible nut is located at the top of the bolt. A frangible nut can be split into two halves. Two NSD, or NASA standard detonator device, is located in the recesses of the nut. When time t is equal to minus 6.6 .6 seconds, the orbiter engines are ignited. The shuttle sways few degrees forward. Within 6 seconds, the hold down post brings the shuttle back to its normal position. And at time t equal to zero, the NSDs are detonated, and SRB engines are ignited. There is a blast container on top to catch the debris from the explosion. After explosion, the nut splits. The bolt gets loosened and drops down. The falling bolt can ricochet and damage the nozzle. So, a container of sand slows down the falling bolt. Now the space shuttle is free from the platform, and it starts to rise up. Let's learn about thrust vector control. The space shuttle is steered with the help of two SRB nozzles and the three orbiter vehicle main engine nozzles. The SRB nozzle is of convergent and divergent shape. With this shape, the flow velocity can be increased by more than supersonic speeds. The nozzle is controlled with the help of a gimbal system. The nozzle has an eight degree range of motion. There is a flexible bearing connecting the nozzle to the aft main segment. 
This bearing is made of metal pieces joined together by an adhesive. When the nozzle moves, the metal pieces slide on each other and allow its movement. Between nozzle and aft skirt, two hydraulic systems and actuators are present. One is tilt actuator and other is rock actuator. These actuators are connected to the nozzle. The actuators pushes the nozzle to position it in a certain direction. Let's take a closer look at the system. Each hydraulic system includes a fuel supply module, an APU, a hydraulic reservoir, a hydraulic pump, a fluid manifold assembly, and an actuator. There is an aft skirt thermal curtain, or ASTC. The ASTC is a flexible, high-temperature insulation cloth used to protect the thrust vector components. The ASTC is of 24 segments stitched together. Each layer is made of nine insulating materials and is 2.58 inches thick. Let's learn about separation module. At 44 kilometers of altitude and two minutes after launch, the two SRBs get separated from the external tank. The separation process includes breaking of connection points between SRB and external tank. SRB is connected to external tank at two points, at the top with forward separation bolt and at the bottom with aft separation struts. The forward separation bolt looks like this. The top side is connected to external tank, whereas the bottom side is connected to SRB. It has a separation bolt in the middle, two NSIs on the each end, and a primary and second eddy pistons at top and bottom. When NSI is initiated, the pistons are pushed against the bolt. Due to stress the bolt cracks in the middle. Then it gets separated into two halves. The aft attachment points are located on the aft ring, and it consists of three separate struts. They are upper, diagonal, and lower. One end of strut is connected to external tank, and the other end to the aft ring of SRB. Similar to forward attachment, each strut contains a separation bolt with a NSI at each end. The struts get separated into two halves when NSI is initiated. Now both the attachment points are broken, but we need to push the SRB away from the external tank. For this we have eight booster separation motors. There are four forward booster motors at frustum and four aft motors at aft skirt section. Let's take a look at aft skirt motors. There is a detonating fuse manifold. From the manifold, a fuse is connected to each motor. The propellant used in each motor is same composition as that of SRB propellant. The detonating fuse manifold ignites the fuses, which then ignites the propellant, creating enough thrust to push the SRB away. Let's look into forward motors. Similar to aft motors, each forward separation motors has propellant and a fuse and a single detonating fuse manifold. Each motor exit cone is inclined at a 50 degree angle with respect to the external tank. The throat of the cone is made up of strong graphite to hold the pressure at that angle. The working operation is similar to that of aft skirt motors. During separation, the actuators are brought to null position. And after the thrust drops to 267,000 newtons, the SRB is separated from external tank. This whole separation process takes only 30 milliseconds. After separation, SRBs fall back to the earth. Let's find out how SRB is recovered. At time t equals to 220 seconds, after separating from the external tank, when altitude switch senses atmospheric pressure, the nose cap is ejected and drogue parachute is deployed. After 18 seconds, the frustum is ejected along with the drogue parachute, and three main parachutes are deployed. The parachutes are fully inflated after 20 seconds. At t equal to 281 seconds, the SRB impacts the water. The main parachutes get detached. Additionally, each parachute features an RF transmitter with an 8.9 nautical mile range, making it easy to find. 
because of air trapped in the empty casing, the SRB floats. A tow pendant is deployed after impact. Divers then attach a tow line to that pendant. Dewatering equipment is then lowered. These units are inserted into the aft section. Dewatering process is initiated. The SRB is then floated into log mode. Then it is towed to the port. On January 28, 1986, 58 seconds after liftoff, the right SRB is started leaking, which burnt the three struts, and SRB got separated from the external tank, exploding the whole space shuttle. It occurred due to segment's joint issue. Let's know how it actually happened. Let's take two joining segments. One is upper segment, and the other is lower. Holes are present around the two segments at the joining region. In the two joining segments, the lower segment outer metal part is called as clevis, which is in shape of Y. The upper segment part is tang. The tang slides into the clevis, and pins are inserted around the junction. There are two O-rings in the clevis. These O-rings are like a sealing gasket for pressure cookers. They prevent the leakage of hot gases. After the ignition, due to heavy pressure the joint starts to pull away and started to oscillate. At a certain point, there is enough gap between O-rings and the tang metal for the hot gases to escape. This failure burnt the three aft struts and made a hole in the external tank, causing the disaster. The following are the changes that are made after the disaster. The pin outer surface got extended. A change has been made to the tang metal region. And an empty region is made in the insulation, which is called as a J-slit. After ignition, the hot gases enter the J-slit. This applies pressure on the tang metal part. For more safety, another O-ring is added. Upon the pin, weather seal is added. And upon that a layer of fairing is added to reduce the air drag. 